نزل ايدك تحت بقول لك انت لو اتحركت سنه كده سنتي هموتك صاحبك كان بيشتمني انا مالي بصاحبي انا مالي بصاحبي naked terrified and forced to dance at knife point these are the victims of gangs targeting lgbtq people in egypt ادي شعرك من على وشك انت منين يا ابن A BBC News investigation has revealed how criminal gangs are using dating apps to find vulnerable people online and how they rob, film, and extort their victims for money. The videos get millions of views and are often sent to the victim's family and friends. They have no one to turn to for help, not even the police. While there's no explicit law against homosexuality in Egypt, The crime of debauchery, which is originally a sex work charge, is commonly used to prosecute the LGBTQ plus community. Twenty seventeen witnessed a major crackdown after rainbow flags were waved by the audience at a huge concert in Cairo. Dozens were arrested including LGBTQ advocate Sada Hagazi, who later took her own life while in asylum in Canada. After the concert, Egypt's Supreme Council for Media Regulation imposed a media blackout on LGBTQ representation, except when, and I quote, they acknowledge the fact that their conduct is inappropriate and repent for it. But queer people still exist, of course, even if the government seems to want to make them disappear. After months of trying, our BBC team was able to find Leila, one of the five people being abused in the gang attack video that went viral. Like others we spoke to, Leila is taking a huge risk to talk to us. We've changed her name, and she's chosen a mask to hide her identity. Leila says the gang targets queer well. people like her for easy cash because of their vulnerability. كان اوسخ ست ساعات بحياتي مين هاد؟ كان معاهم بيبرد درجة كلاش كيف بيقولوا يعني لو ما بترقص صح تندرب عارفين الله يبعدهم عني الله يحرقهم ويبعدهم منهم يعني شغلهم كيف بدهم ياكلوا كيف بدهم يشتروا لازم باليوم يطلعوا لهم موبايلين ثلاث عشان يروحوا يبيعوهم Said, another victim of the gang, is a gay man who was never involved in sex work. After being blackmailed, he wanted to report it to the police, but his lawyer advised against it. لما كنت أروح مثلاً أعمل بلاغة أو حاجة زي كده سألت المحامي قالوا لي أنتوا الاثنين هتضاروا قلت له إزاي قال لي أنت هتسجن وهو هيتسجن عشان أنت جاي عشان أنا كده وعشان هو سرق In Egypt, just being on the apps looking for a date can be grounds for arrest based on the incitement of debauchery or public morality laws. We spoke to people from different sexual and gender identities who have good jobs and manage to maintain stable lives. They too had evidence of how they were arrested and sometimes even abused after they went to the police to report gang attacks. But none of them were prepared to share their stories. The only people who agreed to speak to us were those who could not hide their gender identity and found it impossible to fit in. Those who told us they felt they had nothing to lose. <laughs> هذا مريض اخذوني على الشيوخ بابا كان كل ما بيروح من الشغل يضربني يعني مره ربتني بشنزير طول 4 متر 12 يوم بالضبط هذا لحد الان بحلم فيه يحيى و بكار in this video are the leaders of one of the gangs that attack LGBTQ people <تصفيق> يا ولاد الخايبه 
Homophobic expressions like these on social media go unpunished in Egypt. Here on the left, he shows his face briefly. We're blurring his face because of what we found out about Yahya online. This one here reads, um, beware of these guys, they're thieves, they're the biggest criminals in Egypt. Uh, and someone has actually posted Yahya's ID online. But there was more. Yahya published these stories. It's basically a series of videos of him licking his lips, winking at the camera, lifting up his clothing. You can also see a very sexually explicit video in the background of what appears to be him having sex with someone else. Yahya is a gay man and a sex worker. Like the people he's targeting, he too is vulnerable to attack and arrest. To confront Yahya with our evidence, we approached him undercover as a potential client. He wanted us to move up to his hotel room. We had to leave quickly when he became suspicious about our reluctance to be alone with him. After months of trying to connect with Yahya safely in a public space, we finally managed to meet up with him to hear his side of the story outside of Egypt. Jamal, who's also a sex worker because he can't find other work, says he was also a victim of this gang. But they're not the only threat. <laughs> تعرفت على حد عن طريق الهزير ولما رحت قبله لقيته شرطة القضية اتعملت ثلاث قضايا ممارسة الفجور التحريض على الفسق وعتاب رحت السجن وقعدت قعدت اسبوع Like many other countries sex work is illegal in Egypt but all the people we spoke to told us the police don't discriminate between sex workers and LGBTQ people looking for dates or love online the government is open about their tactics. Now the BBC has gained exclusive access to police documents, which show how they find and arrest LGBTQ people. Have you slept with men before? Yes. How about we meet? But I live with mom and dad. Come on, dear. Don't be shy. We can meet in public and then go to my flat. Police are using apps like Grindr and Who's Here to find users. They impersonate people looking for sex or a date. In some exchanges, the police seem to be pushing people into offering sex for money. But reading the transcripts, it seems that some of the people they're talking to are only looking for love and dates, even new friendships online. The police forces in Egypt receive training from the UK via the UN, and the government gets billions of dollars of support from EU and US taxpayers, where LGBTQ people's rights are protected by law. The Egyptian Interior Ministry did not respond to the BBC's request for comment. Community advocates, many of them in exile, are divided over whether the problems they face in Egypt should be highlighted or kept quiet. Leila, Saeed, and Jamal have chosen to step out of the shadows and break the silence. <laughs> Many of the queer people we met said their only chance of freedom was the difficult path of asylum. Just like Leila. 